All right, Adam, the full schedule for the Colorado Buffaloes is, is announced, and you know slowly we've been learning some of the start times for the Buffs. We're not going to know most of the conference games until 12 days in advance, which has always kind of annoyed yeah, me. But, yeah. you know, I, I get it. It's TV purposes. But for TV purposes, we now know uh, the game times of uh, several of the early games. And, um, you know, North Dakota State's going to be on a Thursday night, uh, Folsom Field um, on uh, – ESPN, is it? That's correct. ESPN. Yes. I'm trying to think of all the stations. At but 6 p.m. Yeah, and then you get at Nebraska the next week is, a, is an ABC game. Uh, NBC. NBC. NBC game, you know, another night game. And then you have uh, Colorado State the next week on CBS uh, is another night Come game. Come on, Fox. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Fox will step up at some point, I assume. But um, And then you got Oklahoma State late in the year. Uh, that's the ABC game, I believe, right? Uh, and then there's another one that's on – is there the another ESPN one? family of networks, but they haven't announced. That's the, right. That's right. That's right. That so, uh, so we got some primetime games. So, uh, you know, we've talked about, you know, uh, I know on, uh, I think on camera, but also off camera about how some of the luster is off a little bit after that four and eight, but then you look at these start times and, and the TV slots like, yeah, the luster, the, the interest has not died off. I mean, networks still want this team on TV. They still want Shadur Sanders, Deion Sanders, uh, Travis Hunter. They still want these guys on TV. Yeah, and that's great to see. And especially you look at, again, the week zero slate in college football is awful. There's only one FBS versus FBS game, and that's Florida State versus Georgia Tech in Dublin. I don't know about you, nothing against uh, the, those programs, but that doesn't really get my blood boiling for college football. So you look at that Thursday night at 6 p.m., it's going to make it a little tricky on campus that day because you're going to have so many people unless they decide to call off classes. I don't know right. uh, if there's any precedent for that. Uh, but th there's going to be a ton of eyeballs on Colorado, and you're going to have – you already know you're going to have national prognosticators that are uh, – cotton's flying around yeah, here yeah. for us. <laughs> uh, you know that – you're going to have national prognosticators that are going to be picking North Dakota State to win that game. Right. And so you're going to have all this buildup to that game. And I think when you talk about an FCS versus an FBS, I think that might rival uh, so, some viewership records that, that they, they've had uh, from those two divisions playing each other. Well, and one thing that's going to get played up a lot, as it should, is that North Dakota State's been very good against yeah. uh, these teams. And it's been a number of years, and the last time they did play one, it's been several years, but they lost to Arizona down in Tucson. But before that, they had won, I don't know how many in, in a row, against FBS teams, and several of those were Power 5 teams that they were beating. And so that's going to get played up a lot, as it should. North Dakota State's been a very good FCS team, and uh, they were in the semifinals, I believe, last year. Now they have going, they are going through a ton of changes, new coach, a lot of new players, things like that. But that's a really good opening game for this team, I think. Yeah, they, they do have a new coach, but it – I kind of go back to it with them and in you know a program like Boise State it's for whatever reason they've built this culture there yeah. that even when they go through a coaching change that culture still seems to exist and you do have uh, it seems like in programs like this really this player led feeling you know that that is uh it's tough when you're recruiting the portal like yeah. a lot of these power fours to do that and so that can kind of bridge the gap a little bit that continuity factor yeah. but um, I mean I I would imagine I will be picking Colorado to win that game but man you you, you know that they're got to have uh, they got to be ready for that right out the gate yeah. um, and, and I like to Nebraska being a little bit later in the day I know that it's not quite as hot out there as like what we experienced out at TCU last year. But uh, to get a start a little bit later in the day and be able to finish that game mm -hmm. under the lights is great. And, yeah, it's been a long time since they've been on NBC, the, the national uh, broadcast there. I think if Fox does pick up one of their games, it would be the first time in program history that all four major networks had picked them yeah. up. Yeah, I believe that's right. And you know, it was, and last year they set a record for uh, most games on network TV. I think they're going to break that this year. Uh, we'll find out. I and mean, they got to be good uh, to get some of those in, in conference play. But that Nebraska game, uh, a little evening action in, in Lincoln, I think that's going to be a fun game. Yeah, no, and, and there's a lot of pressure because there are not future games scheduled against Nebraska. And so yeah. you've got this nice little three-game winning streak uh, against the Huskers as, as a Colorado program. And there's going to be this break, so you want to keep that streak alive so that you can yeah. allow those Colorado fans to uh, remind Nebraska fans how many days it's been since they last beat them. Yeah, there will be somebody, I'm sure, that will reply to this and make a comment on this video how many days it's been because there are CU fans that count that. I just know Nebraska's last win was 2010, and it's now 2024, so it's been a while. Um, but, yeah, the schedule, I think I think it's a fun schedule. I, I like what the Buffs have. Um, we're going to get more into it as the season goes along, but you know, I like that they're going back up to Fort Collins. 
I actually covered the last time they played uh, uh, in Fort Collins back in 1996. Wow, okay. uh, so that was a long time ago. Um, you know, Coy Detmer was the quarterback. Herschel Troutman uh, was a running back, and uh, it was a really entertaining game. The Buffs won, but that was the last time. Was uh, I was a young reporter back then, so it's been a long time. I like they're going to Fort Collins. Uh, I love Oklahoma, Oklahoma State coming here. I love uh, a lot of these matchups. It's going to be a fun schedule. Yeah, and, and they were scheduled to play up at Canvas Stadium in Fort Collins back in 2020. Yeah. That got canceled because of the pandemic. And so, uh, yeah, probably not a popular take with Colorado fans out there, but I have, like you've been looking forward to covering a game up there at that stadium. Yeah. Uh, toured it around when I, I gave a speech a couple years ago and haven't watched a game there. I know you've covered a game there. Yeah. Um, it, it seems like a nice facility, and I think that, it's going to kind of like feel like those old games against CU and CSU when Bradley Van Pelt was the quarterback there. There was this other level of friction between the two programs, and there hasn't really been that natural rivalry that, that you would maybe have if Colorado State was another Power Four program. But yeah. I think because of what happened in last year's game and uh, the social media posts by Norvell's wife, uh, I, I, I think that – that it's gonna, there's going to be a feeling of a real rivalry in that building. I'm anxious to see what what do you think the split is going to be? Is it going to be 50-50 CU, CSU fans in, in that stadium? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, I, the one game I did cover up there was their very first game. Uh, they played Oregon State, and I went up there because CU was going to play both teams. I wanted to see both teams. But, uh, yeah, I, man, I, I think it's probably going to be – more than 50 50 in favor of the buffs i would i would guess it's gonna be 60 40 in favor of the buffs and so yeah take over their stadium that'll add even more animosity on their side so that should be that should be a fun game yeah Uh, anything else going on we want to talk about well they they also announced that the oklahoma state game is going to be at 10 a.m the friday after thanksgiving i I know a lot of folks don't like that early start time it makes it really tough uh, from a tailgating standpoint i get i love it because you get up at six and then I'm done working I can catch the later games that day so yeah. uh, I know that kind of frustrates some people as well but uh, another start time that, that was thrown out there already yeah so a, a fun schedule uh, th- there's a lot of stuff to get to before that though and including camps and uh, camps are going on right now um, you know, what do you expect out of the camps this summer well Colorado just had their first uh, elite camp of the summer and we're actually filming this in Loveland which is funny because just yesterday a player from Loveland High uh, went out there, Zane DeSouza, and, and earned a scholarship offer from Colorado. Yeah. Uh, he had Northern Colorado in, in Washington State before, but was kind of an under-the-radar recruit, worked out at tight end. Uh, talked to somebody up here actually today that, that helped coach him and said that he could even grow into an offensive tackle, that he's wow. he's got some things that, that, that are hard to coach from a physical standpoint. Coach Prime seemed to you know pay attention to him. Uh, a couple other offers went out from that camp, and they've got another of, number of events coming up. You know They've got their seven-on-seven tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll have their women's clinic. And then June 21st is going to be a massive recruiting weekend. They're expecting to host a lot of official visitors that weekend. Uh, Fast forward a couple weeks, it's Big 12 Media Day out in Las Vegas. uh, uh, What is that, July 9th and 10th. And so there are these little events kind of leading up to when preseason camp kicks off yeah and by late july they'll be in camp and so it's yeah. coming up fast and um one last thing before we get out of here is the last time we did a video right after the spring game uh, we threw out kind of a, a weight loss challenge to each other that and and to the fans hey join us as we try to uh, lose some weight um how's that going for you so far well first off i don't know if you went in and read the comments after that video a lot of people were, were on board and they were going to yeah. challenge themselves as well. So we definitely want to hear updates from those people as they're going through it. Uh, down six pounds so far, got a ways to go. Again, kind of trying to attack it less from like, a, you know, going on a keto diet or something that maybe I'm not going to be able to sustain forever, but kind of go with yeah. more little lifestyle changes here and there and uh, sign up for a, a 5K and we'll probably do a couple of those, ramp it up to a 10K and kind of ease in ease into these races again and, and by the time we get to your your, your birthday in, in late October hopefully yeah. uh, I've made even more progress I, I'm definitely still motivated how about you yeah down 14 pounds uh, nice. from the spring game so I'm excited about that and uh, same thing just kind of little try to lifestyle changes watching I'm eating a little bit better and you know I've got you know more to start with more to lose uh, obviously and um, but you know, going on vacation was actually a big one for me because we go out to eat, but my wife and I try to limit our meals, share meals, but go. then she keeps us moving, man. And, you know, my, my step count, you know, my phone's always in my pocket, but the step count at the end of the day, 
those those five days were on vacation were the five highest step count days I've had of the year. And you so, just need to be on vacation. I know, all the time. I know, I know. So you know, maybe that's what I'll do is just take the rest of summer off and I'll come back really trim. Uh, but yeah, looks like things are going well. Uh, hopefully they're going well for all the fans out there. We'd love to hear from you how those uh, you know, those weight loss um, efforts are going for you guys as well. And we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about it throughout the summer and just update you how we're doing.